From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us on the New News. I'm Charlie Kleps. We begin at Lake Elwell, which lies just south of the stretch of High Line between Chester and Shelby. The Toole County Sheriff's Department has confirmed a 17-year-old girl from Great Falls is missing after entering the water on Saturday to paddleboard with a group. MTN's Tommy Lynch is on the scene of the search and rescue. In Toole County, search and rescue teams are working hard to locate a missing 17-year-old girl at Elwell Lake. Boats and ATVs are covering the miles and miles of area in and around Elwell Lake as the search for a missing 17-year-old girl continues. Just after 1.30 p.m. on Saturday, the Toole County Sheriff's Office received a 911 text from the lake. A girl told the Sheriff's Office that her friends had tried to paddleboard across the lake before weather conditions dramatically changed, with 30 to 40 mile an hour wind gusts hitting the lake. Since first communication with the sheriff's office, two of the three missing people have been found. The search and rescue teams have no new information and would not confirm or deny if the missing girl was wearing a life jacket. Law enforcement from surrounding counties, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks, and Toole County Search and Rescue are all on scene, along with state DES in Two Bear Air. But windy conditions have grounded air support at the time. KRTV was told that Toole County would be releasing an updated statement on their Facebook soon. There are no official updates as of yet, but you can keep up to date on the story at our website. In Toole County, I'm Tommy Lynch, MTN News. Snow is the story in western Montana right now, but this weekend a tornado put eastern Montana in the limelight. It even caught the eye of a storm chaser with his coverage going viral. Andrea Lutz spoke with Jaden Poppenheim, who says Saturday night's storm near Poplar will go down in history for him. When severe weather hit this weekend in Montana. And I've always loved Montana and North Dakota. It piqued the interest of Michigan-based storm chaser Jaden Pappenheim. But I try to get up there every time I can. When it looks good enough, I'm going to go up there. And the interest of hundreds of views on his social media accounts. I think there's like over 900 people watching at that moment. So he headed our way and was met with some pretty impressive sights in the Montana skies. Because there was a lot of shear funnels happening at that time along the Ford gust front. And I think an emergency manager probably saw that shear funnel and reported it as a tornado, and that's what got the confirmed issued on. The National Weather Service issued a tornado warning for Roosevelt County, Montana at around 7.30 Saturday night, encouraging people to seek shelter. Damaging winds for sure. I know there are a lot of confirmed 70 mile an hour gusts at airports. But whether a twist or touchdown is still to be determined. Pappenheim, who has 50,000 followers, says the storm carried him 100 miles away to North North Dakota. Yeah, we even got into some intense winds ourselves just as we crossed into North Dakota. Um, we got into some pretty crazy stuff at a gas station. We definitely experienced some intense straight line winds. Uh, trash cans were blowing everywhere and even saw a couple of uh, power flashes. But perhaps the most incredible part is the interaction from the locals, which he says will go down in history as one of the most memorable Northern Plains chases for him. Uh, it's only happened to me a couple times where, you know, the live stream will just go berserk. It reaches the local audience and, you know, everybody says, I'm here. Or, you just passed me or, you know, I pull up to a gas station and they're like, I'm watching your live stream right now. A sheriff deputy, Matt, was actually watching my live stream and commented that I had just passed him. So I said, I've got to turn around and meet Matt. So it was a really special moment. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Happy Monday, everybody. Hopefully it's been great so far. We've got our local forecast coming up, including some areas who could see some wicked weather this afternoon into the evening. But first, what's going on across the U.S.? And, uh, for headlines for the 48s. North Central Plains, heavy rain and severe thunderstorms are possible today. Central Plains across the Great Lakes, a heat wave will expand today. You can see those temperatures down around Phoenix, uh, Vegas, uh, triple digits there again today. Northern Rockies, late season wet snow will persist over the higher elevations over the next couple of days. So this area of low pressure affecting the region today with lower elevation rain, mountain snow. How long will it last and what areas could see some severe storms this afternoon into the evening? We'll break it all down with the main forecast coming up. A former staff member with Montana Tech's athletic department is facing several felony drug charges and is being allowed to leave the state to seek treatment. 
Earlier this month, Butte District Judge Kurt Kruger ordered that Nicholas Bauscher could leave Montana to seek addiction treatment in New Jersey. Bauscher faces 13 charges in connection with receiving illegal drugs through the U.S. mail with intent to distribute. Bauscher was working as an assistant athletic director at the Butte College at the time of the alleged incidents. The judge ordered that Bauscher must continue to follow the conditions of his release on bond last month, including having no contact with witnesses involved in his case. And last night, the Missoula Sheriff's Office responded to a burglary at the 6200 block of Mullen Road at the Hellgate Trading Post. According to a press release by the Missoula County Sheriff's Office, the alleged suspect was wearing all black, a hooded sweatshirt, black sunglasses, and a surgical mask. The suspect had a large bottled beverage and used it to injure an employee. The employee was transported to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. After the suspect left the business, he was then seen in the Greenfield Mobile Court on Mullen Road. If you know their location, do not approach the individual. Call 911 immediately. We encourage residents to leave outdoor lights on and ensure all vehicles, residences, and outbuildings are locked. If you have any information or see suspicious activity, call 911 right away. This is an active investigation and additional information is not available. Almost a century ago, Uptown Butte's Main Street glittered with neon lights. It was one of the first places in the U.S. to show off the power of electricity. And as MTN's Megan Thompson reports, a local business owner hopes to bring back that sparkle with a modern twist. About a century ago, Main Street here in Uptown Butte was brightly lit with neon lights. And one business owner here on Main Street is looking to bring back that tradition with some modern LED lights here at 5518 Designs. We're really excited to kind of bring back some, some street lights and some neon to Main Street. And uh, when, when you think about the old historical photographs of Uptown Butte, when, when there is life and vibrancy and all that, a lot of times you're gonna see a, all kinds of these beautiful neon signs. And, and we wanted to take it on ourselves to, to, do, to do that and, and add to the, to the history of this area. John Wick is the owner of 5518 Designs, a boutique that sells everything from shoes to graphic t-shirts that celebrate Butte and Southwest Montana. The store is housed in the 140-year-old Shawamagon Cafe building, one of Butte's oldest treasures, but the new sign on the facade is as modern as you can get. We have LED lights, which is really cool. Um, it really only weighs like 150 pounds. And it stands eight and a half feet tall with about four dozen energy efficient LED bulbs. John credits local sign maker John Weitzel, who spent five months on the handmade sign. He also credits Butte Silverbow's Urban Revitalization Agency for their help in funding the sign. It's only been up for probably less than 24 hours and I've had a, a handful of text messages and a couple emails just saying, hey, hey John, the sign looks amazing. And so that really like makes my heart happy because that's, that's what we want to do is bring some excitement and some vibrancy and some, some energy to Uptown Butte. In Butte, Megan Thompson, MTN News.